I've been reflecting on the launch of Honorable Millie Odiambo Mabona's book. It's actually here. Um, started reading it, Rig or Be Rigged. Started reading it. It's very interesting. The whole idea is to give a perspective of her life journey. But I think for me, the bigger thing was around women's leadership. I mentioned when I did the last post that I wasn't sure what to expect and I wasn't sure about how I would react to some of the people who are going to be present in the room, if I'm to be very honest, because there's a lot of leaders present right now and more so those who are in the room that a lot of us are not a fan of. But here's the thing. Number one, I think it's important to be in rooms that you're uncomfortable because as long as we are agitating for change in this country, sometimes it means sharing space in some way with some of the people who are the lawmakers right now. But the bigger thing that I reflected on, I think, is the role of women's movements. I moderated a panel that had um, Rachel Shabesh, Mesula Lesuda, Bina Maseno, Betty Murungi, and a FIRE student called Lydia. FIRE, she just, first of all, she just took the mic and she's like, this is my spot. <laughs> as a student leader, this is what we are asking for. And listening to them talk about the journey of women's movements, women's leadership. By the way, I'm heading to Njeri's Kibanda. I was told that when I poor, organic food, so Cyrus will let me know when I need to pull over because I be craving Uji, guys, for no particular reason. Actually, I have a reason, but I'll tell you soon. And the thing about the women's movement and something that um, one of the panelists said is she hasn't felt that the women's, women's movement has been strong. Um, that a lot of the voices are represented by a select few, you know, Honorable Martha Karua, Honorable Millie, or Diambo, they have been vocal and consistent when it comes to the women's movement. Do I agree with that statement? Maybe to some extent, but I think the bigger conversation is, is there space <laughs> for women's movements to thrive? Because the social fabric of our system is oppressive in nature. Uh, oh, remember Ani Hapa? To me, Peter. Nisawa, I'll just turn around. I'll just turn around, guys. Happen not stressed. No worries. The way the system is set up is already oppressive, not just for women. But here's the thing, and I've said this before, the moment a certain demographic um, type of person, whatever it is, is considered less than, it affects everyone. I'm going to turn into Njeri's and and Deleana stories. I'm looking don't go before I get there's some nice shade over here, before I grab something. The fact that our political system doesn't give room to diversity. And diversity, again, isn't just appreciating or enacting the two-thirds gender rule, which is still important. You will find that if you're not from an economic, certain economic status, even certain region, whether you're male or female, let's start there, then there's lesser chances of you being able to participate because that's how the system is set up. It's oppressive. It's very selective for a few. And if I'm to speak But see, today has just been eventful. When it comes to what we're witnessing in Kenya, which is the emergence of movements, movements that are youth-led, women-led, human rights-led, it's, it's important that we recognize it's an integration of different ideas, different thoughts, different um, people, different genders, different tribes. And I think that's why there's such a unified call around it because it's fighting an oppressive system that exists. Um, a system that doesn't give room for people who don't look or sound a certain way. And yes, while I'm highlighting the women's movement, I'm also considering other movements and why they're important because they are a representation of diversity and inclusion, which we don't have which is not recognized partly, as I mentioned, because of our social fabric, because of how we are culturally socialized, um, and it's wrong. And then you begin to see the system, because it's broken, you begin to see the results of it, which is gender-based violence. Um, you begin to see businesses being affected. You begin to see um, different a different status of people being affected all around because it all stems from a broken system. Women's representation is critical because 50% of the world's population is women. 
And when you hear people talk about the importance of women being included in politics, for example, women vying for certain seats and, and the right women, the right women, because there's also some women who are sympathizers of patriarchy and they have messed things for us. So I'm talking about women who have sustained momentum for the rights that we all deserve, men, women, boys, girls, all of us. But then they agitate for women's rights because some of the things we deserve um, are different just based on how we are designed. One of them being menstrual equity. That's something that needs agitation. Access to menstrual products, access to reproductive health and rights services and information. That's something that's pretty much specific to women. By the way, I completely appreciate that different countries um, have complex layers, whether it's around the economic status, whether it's around um, politics. But Rwanda is an example of a country that has achieved gender parity. And what happens then is that you're able to hear certain rights being addressed because the lens of the population is represented. Globally, there's other examples. Kenya, we have very vivacious, powerful women. Some have quiet power, some have strong power, but it's power. And if I'm to give an example of Honorable Martha Karua, a lot of us will agree that she's really agitated for change for a long time. Just the other day, when we were at the event for Honorable Millie, she'd come from the court um, to really push for activists to be released. And then she came for the event. She is, she walks the talk. And I think there are many Millies and many Marthas, but will we ever get to see them? Or will we continue to see a system that you, uses a lot of bullying, violence, sexualization, all of which these women have talked about? There's many documentaries online where you can trace the journey of a lot of our political female leaders and just listen to some of the things that they've had to go through just to get to where they are and even to sustain it. Um, the panel also had people like Bina Maseno. So Bina, Shiko Kihika, Nerima, these are up and coming leaders. They're younger, but can we create space for, I love how Bina put it, to co-lead with those who've come before us. Because every generation needs to be on the table. The older generation gives us the wisdom and the insight of what they've been through. The younger generation gives us their lived experience of what they're dealing with. There is room for everyone in the women's movement. There's room for every gender and demographic, but I think we have to push for it. We have to push for the two thirds gender rule. I know it sounds cliche and annoying, but it makes sense when you understand that if you have the right women leading movements, being in politics, being given spaces to lead, then you're able to bring up a population that is still, still bedeviled by some of the world's most pressing issues, FGM, child marriage, gender-based violence, period poverty, um, illiteracy. All of these issues still hold back women and girls in a huge way. And even though we have male allies who have continued to push for change in, that, in those places, women who have been able to live through this and understand it from a lived experience, or even just understand it from the mere fact that they are women, can give it a bit more gravitas. That's what I truly believe. So let's unpack the women's movement. Let's understand the importance of it being there and the importance of how it's been able to move progress forward for a lot of countries, not just ours. And let's try and address the issue of what we need to rethink when it comes to the women's movement, how it can be more unified. This is It's Official with Janet Bogwa. Let's keep the conversation going. Let me head out to taste Jerry's food. Thank you.